Hi guys, in the next series of videos we're going to take a look at the conservation of energy, what is enthalpy, standard conditions, system and surroundings, enthalpy change, enthalpy profile diagrams, activation energy, enthalpy terms looking at the enthalpy change of reaction, combustion, formation and neutralisation, an exam style question and finally a summary. So let's begin by having a look at the conservation of energy. The conservation of energy is a concept you may well have heard of before. Chemical bonds are the forces of attraction that bind atoms together. Now chemical energy lies within these chemical bonds and this chemical energy is what we call a form of potential energy. In our chemical reactions, the energy is changed from one form to another. For example, the chemical energy may be changed to thermal energy. In these reactions, no energy is lost. It is simply converted from one form to another. So now we've looked briefly at the conservation of energy, how energy is not lost but converted from one form to another. Let's take a look at what enthalpy is. Well, enthalpy, for which we use the symbol of a capital H, is the thermal energy that's stored in the system. Now, we can't measure the direct enthalpy of products and reactants in our system, so instead we measure the amount of energy that's absorbed or released to the surroundings. Now, the method in which this is done can vary, but one of the possible ways to do it is to measure the change in energy by looking at the change in thermal energy. What we mean by that is we can monitor the temperature change. So, a temperature increase would indicate there's a heat gain to the surroundings, and therefore a heat loss in our chemical system whereas a temperature decrease would indicate a heat loss to the surroundings and a heat gain in a chemical system. And finally, enthalpy change, delta H, is the heat energy change at a constant pressure. Before we have a look at what exactly we mean by a system and the surroundings, let's take a quick look at the conditions under which enthalpy is measured. Enthalpy is measured under standard conditions. Conditions you'll need to know and remember. So let's break apart what we've got in front of us here. We have delta, H, and then the Plimsoll sign. You may have mapped delta before. Delta indicates a change, and we know that a capital H represents enthalpy. So, so far we have a change in enthalpy. Now this Plimsoll sign over here indicates the standard conditions, which are 100 kilopascals, that's 100,000 pascals, and a temperature of 298 Kelvin. And it's important you remember these conditions as you may be asked to state them in an exam style question. Standard states are the states which substances are in under standard conditions. For example, the standard state of water is a liquid and the standard state of magnesium is solid. So now I've had a look at what enthalpy is and the conditions under which it's measured, let's take a closer look at those terms of the system and the surroundings. So these are parts of the terminology that are used to discuss components of chemical reactions. The system is the atoms and bonds involved in the chemical reaction, whereas the surroundings are everything else. If we look at this example over here, hydrochloric acid is reacting with potassium hydroxide to form potassium chloride and water. And you can see the reaction takes place in an aqueous environment. Well, what would the system be? The system would be all the atoms and the bonds, whereas the surroundings would be the aqueous solution the reaction is taking place in, as well as everything else. So now I've had a look at the system and surroundings, and we understand what these terms mean, let's take a look at enthalpy changes. Now in general, the enthalpy change is the difference between the enthalpy of the product and the reactants. Here you can see we have delta H, where delta signifies a change in enthalpy, is equal to the enthalpy of the product, minus the enthalpy of the reactants. For the overall enthalpy change, we can classify reactions as either an exothermic reaction, where heat is released, or an endothermic reaction, where heat is absorbed, remembering that we're using changes of heat as a measure of the enthalpy change. So let's take a quick look at the enthalpy profile diagrams of our exothermic and endothermic reactions. Well, let's start by having a look at our exothermic reactions. In these reactions, the enthalpy of the product is smaller than the enthalpy of the reactant, as you can see from our diagram here. The enthalpy of our product is lower or smaller than the enthalpy of our reactant. What we see is that the chemical reaction will release heat, and there is a heat loss from the system to the surroundings. 
and we'll see that delta H, that's the enthalpy change, is negative. In contrast, if we take a look at our endothermic reactions, these are chemical reactions that absorb heat and there is a heat gain from the surroundings. We can see that the enthalpy of the product is greater than the enthalpy of our reactants. Our reactants have a lower enthalpy than our products and as a result what we see is that delta H, the enthalpy change, is positive. So now we've had a look at enthalpy profile diagrams, let's take a quick look at activation energy. Activation energy is a concept you may well have come across before. Well, the activation energy is the minimum energy required to start a reaction. It's like rolling a ball to the top of the hill in order to allow the ball to roll down the other side. If we take a look at the enthalpy profile diagrams of our exothermic reactions, we can see from our graph that the products indeed have a lower energy than the reactants. However, an input of energy is required to break the initial bonds and start the reaction. Once the activation energy, which is symbolized by Ea over here, has been overcome, the energy output of the reaction provides enough energy to sustain the reaction, and the reaction becomes self-sustaining. If we take a look at our endothermic reactions, we can see that the products have a higher energy than the reactants, with our products over here and our reactants having an enthalpy over here, with our activation energy in the middle that has to be overcome before the reaction can occur. Let's take a look at the enthalpy change of reaction. You'll be familiar with some of the notation that we've used. Delta signifying a small change in, the H which signifies our enthalpy, and the superscript Plimsoll sign which signifies that we're under standard conditions. The small r is signifying that we're looking at the enthalpy change of reaction. So what is the enthalpy change of reaction? Well the enthalpy change of reaction is the energy change associated with a given reaction. Let's take a look at another term now. It's a similar term, but it has a different definition. This is the enthalpy change of formation. You can see we now have an F rather than an R to indicate we're now looking at the enthalpy change of formation rather than the enthalpy change of reaction. So what is the enthalpy change of formation? Well, the enthalpy change of formation is the energy change that takes place when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements in their standard state under standard conditions. Here we have an example of a reaction showing the formation of lithium fluoride from its constituent elements. This equation represents the enthalpy change of formation of lithium fluoride because we can see that one mole of lithium fluoride is being formed and it's being formed from its constituent elements, lithium and fluorine, in their standard states where lithium is a solid and fluorine is a gas. So let's take a look at our next term, the enthalpy change of combustion. The enthalpy change of combustion is the energy change that takes place when one mole of a substance is completely combusted. And this equation here represents the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen. We can see that one mole of hydrogen is being completely combusted to form water. So let's take a look at the last enthalpy term we're going to be looking at. This is the enthalpy change of neutralization. The enthalpy change of neutralization is the energy change associated with the formation of one mole of water from a neutralization reaction under standard conditions. This equation represents the enthalpy change of neutralization when hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. Now importantly, the enthalpy change of neutralization is defined as the energy change associated with the formation of one mole of water. So it's important that one mole of water is being formed. The first question is a multiple choice question. Which of the following statements about the image below is false? We're given an enthalpy profile diagram. We can see the reactants have a higher enthalpy than the product. So let's look at our options. A, delta H is negative. B, the reaction is exothermic. C, the reaction loses heat to the surroundings. And D, delta H is positive. So let's begin by looking at A, delta H is negative. If we look at the enthalpy change, we can see that the reactants have a higher enthalpy than the products, so delta H is indeed negative. Option A is therefore true and cannot be false, so we can eliminate option A. Option B is the reaction is exothermic. Well, as delta H is negative, the reaction is indeed exothermic, so B is true and therefore cannot be false. Option C, the reaction loses heat to the surroundings. Well, we know that exothermic reactions are those that lose heat to the surroundings. So, as this reaction is exothermic, C is true and cannot be false. 
Option D, delta H is positive. Well, firstly, D is the opposite to option A. And as option A is correct, option D must be incorrect. And if we take a look at our diagram, we can confirm that. Delta H is not positive, and therefore D is the correct answer. D is false. So let's move on to have a look at the next part of our question. Define the enthalpy change of formation. Well, we know the enthalpy change of formation to be the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements under standard conditions. So let's see how we'd answer this question. We can answer this by simply stating that the enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. This question is worth two marks. The first mark comes from stating that one mole is formed and the second is for saying that it's the compound that's formed from its elements. So let's take a look at part B. We're asked to define the enthalpy change of combustion. So let's see how we'd answer this part of the question. We know that the enthalpy change of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is completely combusted. Again, one mark comes from explaining that it's one mole and the second mark for explaining that it's completely combusted. Let's take a look at the third and final part, part C. We're asked to define standard conditions. This should be a short and sharp answer. Like the other definitions of the enthalpy terms, standard conditions is something you really need to know and be able to state. We know the standard conditions to be 298 degrees Kelvin and 100 kilopascals, getting us our mark. Question 3. Hydrogen reacts with iodine in the following reaction. And we can see we've got hydrogen reacting with iodine to form hydrogen iodide. The enthalpy profile diagram of this diagram is partially drawn below. We're asked in part A to complete the diagram and label the activation energy, the enthalpy change of the reaction, and the reactants and products. So let's go ahead by first of all labelling the reactants and products. First of all we have our reactants over here, and that's hydrogen and iodine, and then we have our products, hydrogen iodide. We can then go ahead and draw in our curve before we label our activation energy and the enthalpy change of reaction. So we know that the enthalpy change of reaction is represented by this, from our reactants to our products, and this is our activation energy. You should be particularly familiar with this type of diagram, these enthalpy diagrams, and you should be able to label different parts and pick out bits of pre-labeled diagrams. So here we get one mark for labeling our activation energy correctly, one for the enthalpy change of reaction, and one for our correct reactants and products labelled on. Now moving on to part B. We're asked if the forward reaction is endothermic or exothermic. If we take a look at the information we're given about the reaction, we can see the forward reaction has an enthalpy of minus nine kilojoules per mole. That's indicating that the forward reaction is exothermic. So we can go ahead and fill that in now, getting us that mark. Now onto the final part, part C. We're told that the activation energy for the forwards reaction is 173 kilojoules per mole. We're asked to calculate the activation energy for the reverse reaction. So the activation energy for the reverse reaction is the sum of the enthalpy of the reaction, which is 9 kilojoules per mole, and the activation energy, giving us 182 kilojoules per mole. In calculation questions, even if it's just worth one mark, it's really important to show all of your working. This way, if your answer isn't correct, the examiner can at least follow through and see what you've been doing, and if possible, credit your working out. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face, and together, let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.